I'm actually a Dutchman, but I've been living in Australia for 10 years, so that gives me an opportunity to give you a bit like an outsider's view from the inside about location, location intelligence down under, and whether it's all about shorts, sandals, and three lights, or whether it's actually more under the sun. Let's look at some common myths uh, that we should debunk about Australia. No, everything's not upside down, thank you very much, and we don't go around with hats and corks. And finally, on the weekends, we do not go and wrestle crocodiles. So once we got that straight, what is true about Australia? Well, firstly, it is a very large country with actually very few people in it. What does it mean? There's lots of stuff to do and nobody to do it. So what we need is technology and we need innovation to be able to just get along and get, get our act together. And, of course, we have Bondi Beach, which gives us a great opportunity to have a surf before we go to work or just hang out on the weekend, admire the view. Seriously, the topic of today, location intelligence um, down under, it's a bit of a... Um, schizophrenic situation. On the one hand, we have a culture, strong culture of surveying, which is a conservative, high-precision kind of culture. On the other hand, we've got lots of innovations. SMEs doing really exciting stuff because they've got that culture of technology innovation. However, it's clumped together. This is a curtain of a university in Western Australia, and they see the spatial sciences as being geographic information science, mapping and mine, and engineering surveying all together. Similarly, in Victoria, the major research areas of the Melbourne School of Geomatics, what is it? Measurement science, which is another great euphemism for uh, surveying, as well as land management and spatial information. There are some, uh, some lights at the end of the tunnel. In 2004, we got our own peak body, the Spatial Sciences Institute, was really only about location information. That was good, that was great. Of course, in 2009, bang, an S was added, and we got the surveyors right st straight back in there again. You know, I can ask yourself, what's the big deal, right? It's all about mapping, it's all about stuff on the land and cartography. Well, actually, surveys look at life slightly different. They've got a little obsession. They call it the precision paralysis. Everything needs to be close to the nearest millimeter, which is great. But, of course, everyone here in this conference knows that's not what it's about. It's the ubiquitous location awareness on our mobile devices. And if that's accurate by about 20 meters, who gives a damn? Um, so does it mean we just throw up our hands in the air and give up? It's all doom and gloom? No, of course not. There's some great examples, as it said, about exciting innovation. And we probably you don't even know about that it's Australian. Let's look at some examples. Has anyone heard of ArcPad? Been around. Very iconic application. Been around for 10 years or, odd or so. It's actually made by a company in Melbourne called MapTel. Um, likewise, um, GML 3.0 has been possible thanks to the driving forces of Simon Cox in Perth, Western Australia. Admittedly, he had some help from Canada and Germany. Um, another example um, would be ER Mapper, now part of the Erdas Apollo suite. It was for many, many years the benchmark in um, desktop image analysis. A another Australian application. And the last one, also from Perth, many of these are from, from Western Australia, is a product called Ingi Watch, which is a real-time spatial complex event monitoring and processing tool that is um, hazard, doing hazard monitoring on high-voltage power lines in Australia, Canada, and the USA at the moment. Um, one last one. There's probably some people over there know these guys. Anyone know these guys? I'll give you a hint. They're actually Danish, but they live in Australia. <laughs> Better still, yes, they're Jens and Lars Rasmussen, and they're responsible for this. And yes, that also comes out of Australia. So, summing all that up, we can say it's actually not so bad. Australia is still on top. It is down under, it's a long time away, long, long while away, and it's big and empty. But it's doing quite well. Looking forward, looking at surveying, location information industry, as the Un University of New South Wales is showing, saying on its website, acknowledging, it's rapidly, both rapidly evolving disciplines. And it's my view that they will continue to evolve and to the point where they are absolutely separate disciplines. And with that in mind, I'm going to stay another outs outsider in Sydney, Australia, for another 10 years, and I'd like you all to invite, come and visit, and see for yourself. Thank you very much.